You did not mm-hmm. cause it, so it was no uh it was no uh preventable or anything that was on your jacket. You you just went and got a lawyer, you know, to protect yourself and to make sure that you was all right and make sure that you get compensated. And mm-hmm. then and 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 then what the how did that work? The company called you up or something like that, or they went through your lawyer or what? No, they. Yeah, it 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 all goes through. So before you even get your pay, everybody else has got to get paid out. All the medical bills get paid. That's understandable. The get paid. That's understandable. The company, you know, the the insurance company, which is the workman's comp company, basically. That's um, not what understandable. A lot of people <laughs> okay, so let me tell you. Go what ahead. a lot of people don't understand mm-hmm. when you're dealing with companies, large corporations, mm-hmm. some of these corporations are part of the state workman's comp, mm-hmm. and then some companies are self-insured. Exactly. Self in, if you are a self-insured, that means they pay, they're they paying your workman's comp because they're paying it out of their own fund. They're not part of the state. That way they can regulate who, what, when, and where. And if they're a self-insured, wholly self-contained company, which right. most major companies are, right? Then yeah, they can they can hold you over the coal, you know. Wow. Um, so everybody everybody's got to get paid, and it, it, it's a learning. So when, when people out there trying to ambulance chase and stuff and, and and do dumb stuff, oh, I'm gonna get paid. I'm gonna. Mm-hmm. They don't understand. A lot of times it's not worth it because the attorney got to get paid, the doctors got to get paid. Um, you know. Whoever else is involved, there's so many different people that's in the pot. By the time you get your cut, or oh, it might have settled for $2 million, but by the time everybody got their little cut, then you don't get nothing. And then um, you got to worry because some states, you pay taxes on your lawsuit. Some states, not all, certain, certain type of cases, some will require you to pay. It, it's good to, if, it's called the ERISA law. It's so good to educate yourself on how some of these darn workman's comp cases go or work type injuries, mm-hmm. the lawsuits go. And because of the fact that we went to full trial, so I had doctors and experts testifying on my behalf. The doctors that performed the surgeries on me had to appear and testify. You know, it's like $10,000 for them to, to take a day off and, and come testify. Mm-hmm. And that including transportation costs, logic costs, all of that comes out of your lawsuit settlement. And a lot of people don't understand it. I'm I'm afraid you know, to, I'm, it, I'm afraid to ask you what what was your what was your what was your cut? What was your final cut? Pennies. Pennies. Let's just say pennies. I walked away, I told them I, I had a few demands. I needed twenty five thousand dollars for a down payment on the on a house. Mm-hmm. All three of my Dodge charges need to be paid off. Mm-hmm. And I had to have um money to finish paying off my daughter's college tuition. So I walked away with 200000 Wow. Oh, plus my one year's worth of salary, they had to pay me for, for missing work for one year. Wow. What was, what was the total settlement? You mean that everything in the hole before everybody started getting their cut? Mm-hmm. Uh... Now, mind you, you say you would have been a million. A, a mil- you say you would have been a million. I think if, it was a. Yeah, if if it, if it had been in Dallas County, off just automatic, like I want to say it was two two point four is what it settled out as. But by the time any and everybody got paid, I had pennies. Mm. My so, attorney was like the one with the biggest cut. So. When, so this is a lesson. Mm-hmm. So when we hear people settling out of court for X amount of dollars, the person that they settling out of court for usually get the bottom barrel of of what's left, mm-hmm. pretty much. You get what's left, right? I think that happened. Mm-hmm. To, I think that happened to me. Well, that that has happened to me. I I don't know what was the total settlement, but 
uh the first settlement i was involved in a i was involved in the accident uh you know a little car accident um mm -hmm. i got with i i got with this attorney his name was tim misney never forget it um mm -hmm. he sent me to you know his chiropractor his doctor Their doctor yeah, uh -huh. his, his doctors, his 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 doctors. So you know, I I ain't think nothing of it. You know, I'm everybody young. get a cut, right? I'm I'm young. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about you know, I'm I'm you know, in my what my twenties or something like that. Um, they got it settled for I say about ten thousand, about about ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I had to come to his house. Nice house, nice house in the suburbs. Because I, I uh -huh. was the one that had to sign the checks. So uh -huh. I went, I signed the checks, and I'm I'm looking at the checks now. I'm, the first check I had to sign, uh, I think it was like maybe about two. Let me see. I, I got $2,500. Uh, uh -huh. Between the doctor and Tim, it was the, it was, uh, let me see. Uh, 60, what, 45, uh, two, oh. two carry that. Uh, let me see, 10, two, about 70. Yeah, because 25, 75. So between the doctors and Tim, it was, it was 7,500. And I think Tim got 5,000 of that. All right. But I had to sign the checks. And that's when I was looking, I was like, bro. Twenty five hundred? Yeah, you know, we, uh -huh. we, we settled it for, you know, ten thousand dollars and you know, we we could have got more, but you know, we figured that it was gonna go a little bit long and we knew that the company wasn't the insurance company wasn't gonna budge too much. Yada 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 yada. And right, I'm over, right. and uh -huh. I'm over here like I'm looking at his check, I'm looking at his cut like Okay, should the five thousand be mine and the twenty five be yours? I'm just saying, bro. I'm the one that was hurt. So, mm -hmm. um, and then the second go around, I was involved in another accident, but this one took forever. Uh, mm. This to took the, the set, yeah, just to settle, and out of that, I only got fifteen hundred out of that. I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking three years, you know, because I got the I finally got the call from I finally got the call from, you know, the attorney. He was like, yeah, we you know, we came to a, a settlement, a settlement amount. And I'm going in, you know, at the time, me and my wife, we going in. I'm thinking I'm thinking ten thousand dollars. You know, we took a long time and I'm thinking that we get in the office, sit down. Mm -hmm. Bro, was like, yeah, we was only able to get fifteen hundred. I was like, you serious after three mm -hmm. years, bro? Like, what the fuck? Right. So now, now here's something that a lot of people don't realize. Mm -hmm. When you get an attorney, they tell you their percentage is 33% mm -hmm. of everything off the top. Mm -hmm. Now, in addition to that 33%, every time you make a phone call and you pick up and get on the phone with them, you're charged one hour. Exactly. One hour would be 300 to $350. Mm. In addition to one hour, if you have to go to trial, mm -hmm. if you have to go to trial, their price increases to, I think, 45% mm. off the bat. That 33% no longer applies if they go to trial because now they have to dedicate more time to it. So, and here's, here's where the money comes in. Mm -hmm. Doctors. Once they find out it's a workless comp case or anything, the prices increase. Mm. So, and I, I found this out during the, you know, when we were trying to settle out everything and it was like, okay, this bill came to this, this bill came to this. When, let's say I had to have a, a, a series of back braces and stuff. Mm -hmm. So the company that I went to go get a back brace from, the back brace ended up costing like $275. That, that would normally, normally I, be like 50 bucks. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. It was two seventy five for this particular brace. I mm -hmm. got the receipt. Mm -hmm. When the re the bill came, they gave me a receipt when I picked it up because I went down into Dallas, Texas to go pick it up. Mm -hmm. When the bill came to the attorney, 
it was now 400 and something dollars. I was like, that ain't true. I got the bill right here, the receipt. I, I screenshot it. I was like, no, nah, it's right here in my phone. They overcharge it. And then I saw a few other doctor bills, and the prices were astronomical. And then that's how I realized, uh-huh, that's when it's they, a worthless comp, they bump the price up. Yep. Especially if it's a doctor that referred you from the, because everybody gets a kickback. So you got to increase it a little bit so that you pay the regular bill, but you're going to get some of that in your pocket as well. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, teachable, that is, that, te- that's, teachable moment. But I, I am glad. I'm I'm glad everything worked out. I'm glad everything worked out. I'm glad that you're here to tell the story. Um, man, that is crazy. So did so after all of that, you you mm-hmm. still trucking to this day. I mean, did after all of that, that traumatic uh event that happened to you, I mean, even after that, you you would have felt some kind of way of getting back in the truck. What what made you get back in the truck? Um, my mission for getting back in the truck, and to be honest, I, I don't think I'm prejudiced. I apologize to your viewers if you got some viewers that's white or whatever. Um, because, you know, one of the things that was said to me on the accident site, this is a woman, she ain't got no damn business out here anyway. Ooh. So I was determined not to let some man, let alone just any man, I went, and this, the driver that hit me made eye contact with me. Mm-hmm. And he had a smirk on his face. I'd be damned if I'm going to let a white man run me off the job, off the road, let alone run me out the oil field when this is what I want to do. So I had, I was on a, I had a mission, a, a point to prove. I was on a mission. I'm getting back in this truck. Um, I had PTSD really badly. Um, but for me to get over it, and to get back out there, I wasn't afraid of the truck. Right. I was freaking out every time something came past me that was large and oversized. That wide, low sign just mm-hmm. kind of do something to me. So I had to, as they say, grab the bull by the horns. Mm-hmm. I had to conquer the beast. So being that I'm in the oil field, they have all these frack ribs. Not far from where I lived at out there in Odessa. Is the company that has all the the, the rigs, right. so I had to go make become one with this 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 what I call the demon, the beast. I had to get, I had to go see it, I had to feel it, I had to touch it, I had to stand next to it. I I did what I needed to do so that I could get back on the truck and get out there and do it because I really enjoyed doing what I was doing. I was having fun. I was the only female out there where I was at, but I earned everybody's respect. Wow. Because I, I did my job and did it well. You're so doing, you're doing, I was a, like, lot no, of, you're doing a lot of milestones, man. Just just sitting here yeah. listening to you is I'm I'm in awe right now. <laughs> so I uh I you know the 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 only reason why I didn't end back up in the oil field in Midland, Odessa was because they pulled me out of the truck for a whole year to make sure I, I remained seizure free mm-hmm. while I was going through therapy and everything. Um because of the concussions and the head trauma, my head broke out the back window um, wow. of the day cab. So the, that lets you know, like I said, I, I was a parked vehicle, fixed object is what the attorneys called it. Parked vehicle hit at 55 miles an hour. Now this, now this, this must have been, this had to be a, a, a major event. Is there any articles on this accident? Um, I don't know if there is or not. It would be in Glasscock County, Texas. Um, when I, we were out in the oil field on a rural road, um, out in the middle of no man's land. Wow. It, it took them, it took them 30 minutes just to get the emergency vehicles to me. Well, about 25, 20, 25, 26 minutes to get the emergency vehicles to me. Um, I was in the truck. 47 minutes total before they got me cut out. And then it was a 38, 40 minute ride to get to the nearest hospital. Wow. We were that far out. You? So, um, I think man. we went to the hospital in big spring, Texas. By the grace of God, you, 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 was you, was you still conscious? Was you still woke? 
I had yeah. lost some consciousness at the initial impact. Um, then I remember making contact with him. This is how it, go, it went down. We were at the bottom of the hill park. Like I said, we got off the road, got on the shoulder, saw the escort car, uh, watched the, 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 the flatbed with the load come over the hill. I got pictures and everything. I can send it to you. Yes. Um, yes. Watched them come over the hill, crept mm-hmm. in the hill, um, come down. Like I said, uh, my co-driver and I, we were, we had just had Labor Day weekend. We were out there just, okay, I'm going to be walking and talking all at the same time. Mm-hmm. I got to hop out this truck so I can go get my truck checked in. Oh, that's cool. Walking and talking all at the same time um, about, you know, the, the hot Labor Day weekend. I had just went and got my puppy and brought her back from uh, Dallas and uh, Robin Thicke's music song, Blurred Lines, was on the radio. That was like my song. Uh, so we were just talking about a lot of stuff. And my coach, I was mentioning about the size of the, the, the crack rig. So, like I say, it, it, was, it was just weird how it happened because that morning we were on such a high, we had rescued a deer that was stuck in a fence. Mm-hmm. The deer tried to hop over the fence and it got his leg caught in the fence, broke his leg, and we cut it out of the fence and, and rescued it. So, it, you know, it was, it was a good day for us. Um, we were out there hanging out and, like I said, you know, watching this. Um, he came down, made contact with me some kind of way, and um, never slowed down, never moved over. When the impact happened, um, well, just before impact, about, about middle ways down the hill. And he was coming pretty fast. So when some people say they light flashed before their eyes, I didn't have that situation. As he was about middle ways down the hill, I happened to look back at him, and I saw where, just how wide he was. He was really wide. And I started analyzing, if he hit us, where where are he going to hit us at? And that's when I realized that if he hit us, I was going to be cut completely in half. I wasn't going to survive. And... There was like no time to react. And so as the impact happened, when, when, by the time I realized where he was at and what size, within a second, he was hitting me. The glass broke. I turned my face and covered my face. And at that moment, I just took a deep breath. And it was like, I let go. And I was like, Lord, I'm ready. I have seen my daughters get married. And this is, this is what was going through my head. At the time. I saw my oldest kid got married. I didn't see my grandkids born. My baby made it to college. I done done what I could do, and I just laid back. I was ready. At that moment, I was ready to, to, to say, that's it. And everything just faded to black. Uh, next thing I know, my co-driver was shaking me on the knee saying, Tanya, Tanya, Tanya. Um, hold on one second. Can, mm-hmm. can we pause this for a minute? Yeah, yeah, you me, you me... you want to you you want to call me you want to call me right back when you get finished? No, no, just hold hold, uh, oh, okay. hold on. Let me let me try to check in with these girls right here. I got you. Um, no, moment, Tito. Okay, <clears throat> so she, she she asked me to hold on for me. She's making a phone call. Um, so he was like, "Hey, you know, you got hit. You got hit. Do you know your name? Do you know what today's date is? Do you know where you are? Do you know who the president is?" So. I'm like, dude, let's check it out. Let's make sure the tank ain't damaged. Let's let's keep rolling. Let's get to the yard, swap out, you know, swap tr- trucks. And he's like, no, no, don't move, don't move. Oh, you um, you you came back too, thinking that you're good. You you're not even thinking right. that you're in an accident. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't, I hadn't realized all of that. I was like, damn, you know, because when he made impact, the glass shattered. There was a strong breeze of air that came through the truck. Mm -hmm. Um, something hit me in the head. So something up, I don't know, the top of the truck or something, you know, maybe the CB bracket hit me. And I remember getting hit in the forehead, my head going backwards. I tilted back in the seat. You know how your mom used to yell at you about rearing back in the seat. Mm -hmm. I remember going backwards and I remember coming back forwards over the top of the steering wheel. I remember that. As, as impact happened, like I said, this is what's going through my head. I didn't, I didn't done what I was supposed to do as a mother, as a person. I'm ready. And he was like, what's today's date? Don't move. You hit your head really hard. I was like, nah, it's just my forehead. 
He's like, no, just sit still. You really hit your head. And he wouldn't tell me. And I was like, dude, I just got hit right here. He's like, no, 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 just be still. Just, do you know what today? And he just kept saying it. Tell me who the president is. And so I'm looking at him. So by now, I'm ready to start talking Spanish. I'm like, come on now. Um, <laughs> you know, how do I get you to understand? I'm cool. Let's, uh, let's get out here and check out the truck. The door is off. Let's go see what else is him. And so he was like, you really hit your head hard. I just need you to be still. So I didn't know that behind my head, everything was busted out and there's hair and scalp in the window. And so little misconceited diva trucker whips out her cell phone and starts looking at my face. Cause I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? Why he keeps saying, just be still. So he was like, there's so much. And he just had like a sound of just, Oh my God, there's just so much hair. And I'm like, the hell? Let me look. So, like I said, I, I had long hair, and my hair was in a ponytail, and I was like, uh, maybe when he came by, you know, it got called or something in the breeze. Mm -hmm. And so I pulled out my phone. I'm looking. I'm like, well, my face is intact. I look at my hands. I got, you know, cuts and scrapes and blood on my hands. And at that moment, I felt my toes. I was like, ooh, okay, well, uh, I don't see no blood around the waist. I feel my toes. I ain't paralyzed. Okay, I'm good. Come on, let's get out the truck. He's like, no, 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 you got to stay here. In the truck. So by this time, the farmer in the field who was plowing cotton, his worker on the other side, and the escort cars, they don't stop. They run into the truck. The, the two escort cars are females, one in the front. They're screaming and panicking. Oh my God, oh my God, and all this stuff. And the farmer's like, um, he ripped whatever left part of the door was off. He took that off. And he was like, we got to get her out. We got to get her out. Um, and I was like, look, you call 911. I was like, uh, told my co-driver, you call safety level, we've been involved in an accident, and I'll get out and check the truck. He's like, no, you can't get out the truck. You got to sit still. Don't move. You really got hit hard. Right, plus again, you're stuck. I, was, I didn't know I was stuck at the time. And so, you know, they're standing at the door talking and asking me questions, and I can't believe this happened. We told them to slow down, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, check this out. We're cool. And just as I said, we're cool. I said, let's just, everybody take a breather. It was just a crash. It looked like every, I could see the hood it was up and half the hood was chewed off. I didn't know that half the motor was gone. And at that time, right when I said, just everybody take a breather, hold on, the truck died. It was running, and then it died out, and then smoke just started filling up. And he's like, come on, I got to get you down. I'm, I'm going to help you. I was like, cool. So I went to go rotate to the left to exit out of the truck, and I couldn't move. I said, hell, I'm stuck, you know? I said, oh, let me go this way. So then I tried to go to the right, but the gear shift, because of the impact, gear shift is, is you know, up around your knees. It was sitting flush and braced against the back of my hip. So I was, I, I couldn't rotate. The dashboard was sitting, um, like, on my lap, and the steering wheel was in my chest, right, right above my stomach. So... And we're trying to, they're trying to slide me in and out. And the truck is billowing in with smoke and everything. And I said, Jesus, I'm about to, you, you, you let me live through the crash just to blow me up. I'm pinned in the truck. And so they figured out that it was just a radiator and it wasn't going to blow. And I was like, y'all drop that trailer, pull that trailer black. Cause if something else go wrong, I'm attached to a trailer full of, you know, oil. Mm. And that's how that happened. Man, Diva, wow. That's an intense yeah, an intense crazy. story right there, man. I, I I'm I'm you know, accidents changes people. I mean it it changes yeah. your perspective, it, it, it changes your way of thinking. And again and again for you to even get back in the truck after a traumatic hey, experience baby, okay. like that. Hold on one second. Hold on, mm -hmm. hold on, hold on one second. Hi, I need to check my truck in um, for air leak. Okay, what truck do you have? Uh, Kenworth T680. I have a trailer, too. Okay. Where is it? What's Blue. Truck and truck number? 20. So what's going on? Is this, uh, I'm, I'm losing. Air you don't hear the air blowing, but it's coming out. I think it might be a valve, but I'm not sure. It, I, I lose total air in Primary, secondary, and transmission air within like 40 minutes. 
Nothing blowing. Nothing. You don't hear anything. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to your shop whenever you Okay. Ready. I'm parked on the street. On the street? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've been trying to watch. It, 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 it was that close, but it's right here on the other side of the hallway, right? right in front of the, what is it, the police department? Yeah. Right there. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. Excuse me. Thank you. Man, it's a whole lot of folks over here. These folks look to be that good. <laughs> Man, so. Wow, that that's that's it's awesome that you're here, man. And I I I appreciate I appreciate the story. Uh, you know, I it, I I I know it's kind of hard to probably go back to that time because it uh, was well. Let me ask you this: going back to that time, explaining the story like you did, did did you feel some kind of way? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you felt. Let me tell you. I'm sure you felt some kind of way after it took so long and you only got so little. But did you, you know, telling the story now? Did that bring up any, you know, residual uh, feelings? No, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm so blessed to be able to survive and be able to share that because I'm a living, walking, breathing testimony to God's goodness and mercy so i use that story kind of sometimes as a teaching moment and as an opportunity to speak about god to people to let them know that hey you can overcome things and when it's your time it's your time but god calls the number when, when he's ready for you to make that move he'll let you know he let me survive he let me survive for a reason what the mission is i don't know but obviously he got something greater in mind for me that he wanted me. And that's not the first time I've uh, been somewhere where I've had a close call or two, you know. Mm -hmm. It's been like that pretty much. Like I told you, I'm, I'm kind of like a, a, a drilling and junkie seeker or something. I do all the dangerous stuff. Man. And I don't, I don't do it for fun and jokes. I don't take it lightly. I take it seriously. But... Man, I am, God first in all things, I am I am glad that you're you here. Um so like I said before, you you jump back in the truck, you overcome mm -hmm. you, you, you overcome the adversity to get mm -hmm. your uh authority. What again, I know I asked you this earlier, and I think we kind of like sideways in this in, in into the story, but uh what 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 impress you to get your uh authority um the way that came about which was something that i had never had any intentions on doing so once we got the lawsuit settled um you know of course i made sure that all my debts that i had were satisfied and i wanted to have just a clean slate to go forward in life Mm -hmm. past that where some people get some money and they be out there trying to floss and boss and yeah, they're broke. cars and jewels yeah. uh traveling yeah they're I've broke. traveled my whole life right they're broke right quick and fast i've traveled my whole life i've been around the world so stuff like that i'm always traveling i live to be on the airplane um you know so i didn't have to go crazy for that i already had jewelry you know i didn't have to go crazy i already had a nice car so mm -hmm things that I was doing before the lawsuit. The lawsuit, yeah, it was good money. I did take a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars of splurge on myself a little bit and my grandkids, but I was trying to be smart. This money, seeing how I got such a raw deal on it, you know, I had to figure out how to make that money work for me and go long ways. Mm -hmm. So um, I was driving when this lawsuit settled in, settled out, I was running for FedEx ground mm -hmm. out of Las Vegas. And so I had a little sweet run. I'd go Vegas to Rialto, California, California to Texas. And then back, you know, we do all that turn in five days. Um, and everything was good. My uh, contract owner had me like being in charge of the fleet and the maintenance and stuff like that. But he kind of pissed me off because every time, you know, they would get a new driver and I'd have, you know, a truck fixed up. My truck was always kind of in a better condition than everybody else's because I'd clean it and keep it running right. Every time 
a new driver came, they would take my truck from me. And want to put me in something lesser and get them the nicer truck. So we, we kind of bumped heads about that a little bit. Right. And then um, 